supreme gods, bless us so that calamities do not befall us. May there be peace and happiness and long life, and may our descendants prosper and become notable, not through fortune or fame, but through love and deed. May our rice fields flourish and our silkworm cultures thrive. May our work be blessed in your eyes. May evil spirits be banished and ghostly auras destroyed. Divine talismans hold something unfathomable. They settle eternally in the courtyard. Their tally, miraculous. Numerous in the past, blessings impossible to put into words. May the gods protect us all of our days. May heaven, earth, and water guard all living things. May all constellations sustain and protect me. May all the seasons of the year, all hours of our days, be free of disaster, innocent of harm. May the stars of good come and the stars of evil disperse. you're watching in a bright room and that you're not sitting too close to the TV. And yes, that means you. Okay, let's roll it. Angel Heart Prototype Code Mark II. My trump card. I cannot let them get in my way. Can I?
Haley, guys. Let's not do this. Shut up, pussy. I'm not a pussy. You sure are acting like one. Come on, man. A demonic doctor's mansion. Don't you think that's cool? No, I don't. Sure it is. Everyone in town's been talking about this for years. You know the story. A woman kidnapped during an eclipse, taken to a crazy doctor's mansion. Dissected alive. And all that's left of her is her head. In formaldehyde. And she still talks. For God's sakes, help me. Awesome. Okay, so what's gonna happen to make sure we don't get hacked up like that woman? Nagahito, you dumbass, that's why we're taking you with us. Yeah, your family's into all that yin and yang shit. You can protect us with some talisman or chant or something. It's mysticism, and you guys don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we bet, bet you, you don't, don't either. either. We are ready whenever you are, sir. Preparation for departure completed, General! Hmm. Very good. Carry on, Captain. Yes, sir! Move out! He may be a brilliant scientist, but he's acting like a fool. Does he actually think he can escape the Imperial Army? It's laughable. I'd hope that the civilian contingent will be unaffected, but we know that's impossible. The Professor will be retrieved at any cost. Right. What? No way! This property is sealed off until further notice. Entry and passage of military personnel and transport vehicles only? Shit. <sighs> military? This is weird. Let's bail. What do you mean, bail? The house is right over there. I'll bet we can make it. Let's beat it. Yeah, come on. You know what? I bet the gods were protecting us because something bad was gonna happen. All right, this is it. Since they've blocked the front of the mansion, we'll just slip on in the back way. What? You mean we're still gonna go in there? See? Told you so. Piece of cake. This is a really bad idea. Quit crying, you big baby. Surveillance teams report no one has gone in or entered the mansion, Doctor. Good. Implement second stage preparation procedures. Yes, ma'am. It could have been so different, Doctor. Oh, this is too perfect! The only thing that's missing is a welcome mat. Can you get it off? You bet. Now we're gonna get busted for breaking and entering. You got a good point, so you better be really careful not to get caught. Huh? Please, don't make me do this, you guys. I don't understand why I'm the one who has to go. Because one, you're the smallest. And two, you say you're the big <gasps> Omnio mystic so you can protect yourself. Now go. <laughs> No! You better not come out of there until you got that woman's head! And don't drop it! And don't get caught! <laughs> We're pulling for you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys.
find the head and get out of here. Just find the head and get out of here. What am I saying? Just get out of here. What's taking him so long? He's gonna screw this up. Bet me. What's that? Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Yeah. That's bad. It sounds like some burglar machine or something like that. It's that crazy doctor! He's coming after us! Well, you keep it together. <laughs> Man, it's coming closer, and I'm not sticking around. We're staying right here. Yeah. Maybe if we don't move, they won't find... <gasps> Hello? Anybody here? Uh, hi. <gasps> Master? Huh? <laughs> Kurumi. Huh? Kurumi, but how? How have you been activated? I'd advise you not to move, Dr. Ayana Koji.
Don't go away. The next episode is coming right up. Now that Kurumi has been activated by Nakahito, find out just what that life-giving kiss means for the young boy in the next Steel Angel Kurumi, a one master kind of gal. Um, please watch in a brightly lit room and sit a good deal away from the TV, okay? Let's, uh, start the show now. What? Ayana Koji's Steel Angel has been activated? Why? I believe everyone at this table knows why. Uh, no matter. Let me remind you, gentlemen, that this is the angel that was equipped with the Mark II prototype. How could we let this happen? We? He is acting alone. To debate the madness of his actions serves no purpose. We must investigate this situation immediately. Because I'm afraid time is a limited resource for us all. I would encourage you, Doctor, to surrender quietly. Amagi. You don't have a chance of escaping the Imperial Army. Come back, Doctor. If you cooperate, we can continue our research of the Angels together. Together? So you can use the Angels as weapons of destruction? Just like you're using that steel soldier now? <sighs> hey, Master, you're not hurt or anything like that, are you? Come on, Master, please say something! Kurumi. Yeah, I think I'm okay. I was so worried. Kurumi! Huh? Kurumi! Destroy the Congo! Huh? The soldier prototype Congo! Destroy it now! My god, that girl is the Steel Angel? Kurumi! I gave you an order! Battle mode now! Who are you that you think you can boss me around, Mr. Big Mouth? <laughs> Mr. Big Mouth? I'm sorry, is it Miss Big Mouth? Don't be ridiculous! I'm your creator, Kurumi! You do as I say! Huh? Hmm... <gasps> so you're my mother! Huh? <laughs> Kurumi! We have to get out of here now! Come on! You're not leaving, Doctor! <laughs> Don't make me hurt this boy! <laughs> His life or your life? Make up your mind, Doctor. You too. Not you. I don't know who you are, lady, but you put that...
hurt you, did it? No, I'm fine. I will. I'll pulverize that thing if you want me to. No, it's okay. The angel's power is immeasurable. Attack! Full power! My god! She stopped this prototype's attack like it was just a child's play toy! See ya! Are you okay, Master? Please let me help you. Tell me if it hurts. Well, this hurts pretty much. <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry, Master. It's okay. Just don't do it again, all right? Hey! Hmm? Kurumi, help me! Okay, Mister, I'm still a little fuzzy on why you're even talking to me. What do you mean, why am I talking to you? I'm your creator! Will you stop saying that? God, you're obnoxious! Uh, Kurumi? Master? This guy seems to know what's going on. Maybe we should listen to him. So do you want me to take him with us? <sighs> okay, where to, Master? Down would be nice. I have a place in mind. We'll be safe there. I'm with him. Then so am I. Dr. Amagi, are you all right? Never mind about me, idiot. Where's the doctor? I'm sorry, Dr. Amagi. They have gotten away. <sighs> Captain, we found a woman. A woman? In that rubble? <gasps> oh my god. Doctor, a woman has been found in the wreckage. I heard. Hurry up and get me down from here now! This is it. Uh, right here? Don't worry, son. They won't find us here. Kamehito. Dr. Ayana Koji. What happened, Nakahito? <laughs> Kamehito, have you and this boy met before? Yeah, he's my little brother. Your brother? Yeah, I can't believe that I never told you about him. Get back! <laughs> Kurumi won't let anyone touch you ever again, Master. <sighs> Kurumi? Don't you worry, Master. Oh, you're so cute! A million dollar military weapon. I accept full responsibility, General. You may punish me as you see fit. But, sir. General, I've acquired an object that I believe would be of particular interest to you. All right, I'm listening. I'm Nakahito. Dr. Ayana Koji. I'm Karumi. And I'm Kamahito. I don't understand. Why does she keep calling him Master? Because Kurumi was designed to only recognize the person who activated her as her Master. But I didn't push any button or anything. What does it matter anyway? I'm awake and we're together. All right, Nakahito. I want you to listen to me very carefully. Yeah? Are you 100% sure you are telling me everything? Nothing happened. What is it, Nakahito? Do you remember something? Tell me! Yeah, but I... Tell me! Listen, no matter what happens, you have to tell me about it. You have to. Uh... I mean it! Nakahito! All right, that's it! What? Picking on him! Okay, I might have... Kinda kissed her. What? Kurumi? 
You kissed her? I guess it's just a fact of life that you were gonna have to grow up sometime. But I don't think you understand what you've done here, Nakahito. Hey, hold on! You've got it all wrong. I didn't do it. On purpose. On purpose? You say kissing her was just an accident? How long will it be before you tell us hey, to- Hey, back off, old man! Is it so hard for you to believe that I might have been awakened by the simple power of love? All you need to do is look into his eyes and see that we're madly in love. Oh, uh, let's not go overboard. You don't love me? Oh my god, I can't believe you, Master. What a kidder you are! Come on, Master, give me an order, okay? Huh? I mean it! You're my master! I'll do whatever you want. That's What the deal. I wouldn't give for a girl to say that to me. The prototype wasn't Dr. Ayano Koji's only angel project. This is the second unit, codename Saki. Perfection. So life. Ah. <clears throat> it was a joke. <laughs> These, General, are the hearts of the Steel Angels. There seems to be a variance in size. Yes, but fluoroscopic analysis shows us that the one on the right will fit the Saki prototype's chest cavity. So, a bigger heart would mean an angel with a bigger... <clears throat> <clears throat> chest. Can you activate her? That's my goal, General. It appears Kurumi isn't the only Steel Angel to be brought to life. Unfortunately, this angel wasn't activated with a kiss, which could explain her less than loving attitude towards Kurumi. Stay tuned for Cold Saki. Kurumi, please inform everyone to watch the show in a brightly lit room and to not sit too you close quit to You're telling the... me what to do. No. You're bringing him into the project. Yes. 
This is Dr. Brando from the British Empire's Research Development Laboratories. When Dr. Ayana Koji was studying abroad, he asked Dr. Brando for his help on the Steel Angel project. I thought this was his only involvement, but I have since been informed that Dr. Brando continued the research without Ayana Koji. Amagi, I want you to work with Dr. Brando to hasten Saki's activation. Doctor. Well, yeah. I can see how that might have been a little intense for you. I can't have things like this keep happening. It's weird. Master, why aren't you eating? What's wrong? You look a little flushed to me. You're not running a fever, are you, Master? <sighs> hmm. Oh! <sighs> you do feel a little bit warm. He's just fine. Healthy, as a matter of fact. He's perfectly normal. What a relief! Come here, you. Oh my god, what's the matter with you, Master? Master? Wake up, Master! <laughs> it's not easy growing up, is it, Nakahito? Huh? Huh? I'll get it. Wait. We don't know who it is, Nakahito. Don't worry, I'll find out. Keeps bugging me. Open the door. Uh. Why don't you close the door on me? Huh? Oh, uh. Master wanted me to find out who was at the door, so that's exactly what I did. <laughs> you know, you could be a little bit nicer. It's not as if I'm the one who created you or anything. It's not good. There are so many guards I couldn't even get close. The mansion, the lab, even the grounds are under their control. Saki. The hearts, they have everything. What are we going to do? Wait, they won't be able to activate the prototype. No matter what technique the army tries, they'll only be using technology based on this era. It won't be enough. Amagi will do everything she can, but it won't be enough. All right, this is it. Send the first current flux to the heart chamber. Hmm. 
Pastor, can I ask you a question? Aren't you just a little bit bored? Well, yeah, but what can we do? Huh. I know! How about you and I go into town together? No way. Dr. Ayana Koji and my brother left strict instructions for us not to leave the house. No ma'am. No ma'am? Huh? I don't understand why you continually insist on being so formal. You're my master and I do everything you tell me to. We're close. Well, okay. Well, okay, then do it! Come on, give me an order! But, order you to do what? Well, I bet if you think really hard, you'll come up with something, master. Hey, you're putting a lot of pressure on me. But what about the pressure I'm under? <laughs> okay, okay, calm down, I'll do it! So what'll it be, master? Well, then how about dinner? You know, maybe a little curried rice with fried pork cutlets? Is that good enough? Yep! Perfect! Are you sure about this? Of course I'm sure. I heard these people talking and they say this place has the best curry rice in the city, hands down. Okay, that's not what I was talking about. Oh, it'll be fine. Dressed like this, we're just another couple on the street, not Karumi and Master. It's perfect. But why did you have to dress me up like a mocha? Mocha, Japanese slang, means modern girl. Stop complaining, you look cute. Come on, Master, let's go. Uh. Ah! with those two. Listen, I don't think this was such a good idea. Let's go home. No, you said that you wanted to get something to eat. And it's my job to do everything you tell me to do, Master. Got it? All right. Well, in that case, I order you to take me home right now. Master. What were you thinking? We left explicit instructions for both of you to stay here. What, can we not trust you? This is serious. I'm sorry. Listen, buddy, it's not Master's fault! It's my fault. I wanted to go. If you're gonna yell at anybody, yell at me. You know, you're a very lucky boy, Nakahito. Yes. Begin attack protocol. Yes, sir. Commence attack sequence! Hold your fire! Cease fire! Continue. Resume attack sequence.
Excellent. Her powers exceed my expectations. With this weapon, we will be able to destroy them, anyone who lifts an opposing hand against us. We will become the greatest military power in the world. Congratulations to you both. You make a great team. You should be proud. I'm afraid I was merely a collaborator. It was Dr. Amagi who truly activated the Steel Angel. Mm. By the way, Amagi, does the Saki prototype comply with every command she is ordered to obey? Yes. Obedience circuits have been built into her neural matrix. It is impossible for her to disobey her orders. Interesting. Yes. So, uh, then would she do anything you told her to do? She is programmed to obey me. Hmm. I see. Hmm. Excellent. Keep me posted on future developments. When the Angel Saki is activated, her fury against Kurumi is unleashed. Is Kurumi powerful enough to stop her? Or is this Angel's wings about to be clipped? Find out in Don't Hate Me. When you watch the show, make sure you're not sitting too close to the television. And you've got the lights on. Nice and bright. What is it, sweetheart? <laughs> oh my god! I never thought just one little word could make me so happy. Silly thing. You know how I feel about you, don't you? Yes, I know. Kurumi, can I... Can I kiss you? What? You want to kiss me? There's nothing I'd like more, Kurumi. <laughs> me either, master.
by spilch flourish and our silkworm cultures by. May our work be blessed in your eyes, and may evil spirits be banished, and ghostly forms destroyed. Divine tales of talismans hold something in fathom that are tally miraculous. I mean, numerous in the past, blessings and fears of disaster and worries. May all constellations sustain and protect the stars. May all the seasons of the year, all hours of our days, be free of disaster, innocent of harm. The stars of good come, and the stars. <sighs> wow, you're hardly wet at all. <sighs> <laughs> You've got a long way to go, little brother. I know that we're both descendants of an Amyo priest, but I'm just pathetic. Just because you can't see it or feel it now, doesn't mean it isn't there. Nakahito, why don't you come to Izumo with me? You want me? There is a laboratory I've built in Izumo, and I believe it would be best if you'd come along. After all, you were the one who was able to activate Kurumi. I think this is a mystery only you can help me solve. Originally, Dr. Ayana Koji believed my powers of mysticism would be able to activate the angel, but it seems you were able to do so without any such incantation. But I didn't do anything. You might not have meant to do anything, son, but nevertheless you did, and now you are the only one who can control Kurumi. But I... I don't... Steel angels are designed to only obey the orders of the person responsible for their activation. So like it or not, my young friend, you are responsible for her actions. You control her. Please. Rise and shine. We have a certain doctor that demands our immediate attention. But, I warn you, Ayana Koji will not be alone. He's guarded. You will destroy this protector named Kurumi. Do you hear me? Like it or not, Kurumi is under your control, my young friend. There he is. How about you tell us what happened back there? You must have tripped some alarm or something like that, because they all came after us. Yeah, punk, what'd you do? Nothing. Master! Where are you, Master? Come out, Master. Are you hiding from me? Where did he go? Leave me alone. All of a sudden, the army came rolling in like they were ready for war. What did you find in there? Come on, Nakahito, start talking. I think he's trying to hide something, guys. What do you think? No, I didn't see anything. Tell me voluntarily or I'll beat it out of you. It's nothing. So the army's after nothing? <clears throat> <clears throat> all right, I've had it with you. I'm serious. I didn't see anyone at all. So, now it's anyone. No one. Anything. I didn't see anyone or anything. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Kurumi. Oh, wow. Babe City. Only he can talk to me like that! Uh. <laughs> 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 Kurumi! 
me wait. Uh, uh, what a... Put me down. Sorry, no can do. Hey, easy. Oh, come on, let him go, please. That's the second time I've heard that command. Too bad I don't take orders from you. Hey, you put Master down! Kurumi, don't! Huh? But why, Master? Why do you want me to stop? Just do it, okay? But I don't understand. I'm doing this for you. I said put him down! And don't be so rough, you got it? Okay! Here you go. <laughs> 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 That's that! It was really nice of you to save their lives like that, Master. Hey, where are you going? Just leave me alone. What did I do wrong? to do. He could have at least told me what to do. <gasps> oh my god! He doesn't hate me, does he? That's it, isn't it? He hates me. Just leave me alone. Why would he want to be alone when we could be together? Unless he hates me. Hates me! But why? No, that can't be it! I haven't done anything wrong! I haven't! Okay. That felt really weird. Where is the target? Saki! Where is the target? The target? You mean Kurumi? Kurumi is target. Kurumi's right here! Uh, hold on a minute! Who are you? And why do you keep calling me your target? My name is Saki. Destroy it! <laughs> 
As the battle between the angels rages, Kurumi doesn't stand a chance against the ruthless Saki. But is there a power source neither Saki nor the Imperial Army didn't count on? You'll see in the next Steel Angel Kurumi, Warm Saki. Is everything ready? Yes, sir. The room is well lit and viewers are seated a good distance from the screen. Very good. Roll it. How dare you do this to my master's house? Saki, why are you doing this? You know why. I don't! I swear I don't! I don't understand. Why won't she fight back? It's wrong, Kurumi. Fight back. When you're dead. Kurumi! Don't! Nakahito! Master, don't worry about me. Get back. What's going on? Why won't you fight back, Kurumi? You fought a whole army, but you won't fight her? Because you're my master and you told me not to, that's why. Huh? Yeah! Just a minute ago, you ordered me never to hurt anybody. Kurumi! Don't be so rough, you got it? So that's why? That's why you won't fight? Of course. Kurumi! <gasps> Kurumi, that's not what... That's 
not what I meant. Run, Master! Just run! Is she dead? No. <laughs> oh, Margie. You've won, and I have failed. You failed? What? Did you kill her? How did you activate her? It's impossible with the technology you possess. It was a forced activation from electric current flux. As you can see, it wasn't a true activation. So she was, like, fighting me in her sleep, is that it? A forced activation? Was this your idea? Dr. Brando's, I'm afraid. What? He had continued research without you and volunteered his assistance. He volunteered? How noble. No time. If Kurumi's second unit has been activated artificially, the reinforced nerves... What's a second unit? A sister, metaphorically speaking. A sister? Ah! I can't believe it! I'm not alone! Kurumi has a sister! Huh? We are going to be the best of friends, Saki! We'll stay up all night and talk on the phone and do each other's makeup and flirt with boys! I can't wait! Oh, no, you don't! Don't fall asleep on me now! Wake up! Saki, the same way you woke me up. The same way as Kurumi. <gasps> no way. Oh, come on, pretty please, Master. It'll be easy for you, Master. Just pretend Saki is Kurumi. But I can't do that. I couldn't. Hey, I don't ask for all that much, you know. Kurumi, I'd like to, but I just can't. What do you mean you just can't? But I don't remember how I did it the last time. Do it! One, two, three, now! I don't know if it's possible to reanimate her after an artificial activation. Amagi? I don't know, Doctor. I really don't know. But it could work! You don't know for sure! Master, you know in your heart that I would do anything for you. Couldn't you just do this one little thing for me? Please, Master? For me? Okay. You. Pucker up! Here! What? What does she want him to do to her? I believe the correct term is kiss. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you talking about? This isn't a fairy tale. I question this little experiment as well. Come on, Master! Smack her! Ooh. Here goes. that, but I've changed my mind. New rule, I'm the only one you kiss. Okay, whatever you say, Kurumi. I'll just do it myself. I'd rather have me kissing someone else than you kissing someone else, even if it is a girl. Saki?
<laughs> Good morning to you, Saki. Glad to see you're awake. Oh my god, it's not possible. Somehow the energy within Kurumi's heart was able to resuscitate Saki's heart. Welcome back, little sister. Okay, you're not really my sister, but you know what I mean. Sister? She... she can't be my sister. You look strange. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm fine. Saki, come with me. I'll need to examine you. I don't belong to you. You keep your hands off. Uh, but Saki... Saki, Kurumi, are you sure you're both all right? Huh? What do you mean, Master? Especially you, Kurumi. You look like you're hurt. Oh! Oh, Master, that is so sweet! You were worried about me! I could just squeeze you! Well, you are, and you're hurt! Oh, sorry about that, Master. <laughs> okay. Listen to me really carefully, Kurumi. Mm -hmm. When you're in trouble, it's okay to fight back to protect yourself. Do you understand? Hmm. Okay, in trouble. Okay to fight back. Oh, I don't get it! You know all the rules and I don't know any of them! Um, yeah. <gasps> hey! Since you're the one who knows all the rules, you can teach them to me! Yeah, if you want me to. Everything. You have to tell me everything you know, okay? Well, I don't know if I know as much as you think. Are you all right? Oh, no. Doctor! Wake up, doctor! Wake up! Get back. Don't move him. What a shame. Looks like my aim is a little off. Oh, well. Where are you? If I can't have Karumi, then I'll take the next best thing to the Steel Angel, the one that created her. Now that Saki has switched alliances, Kurumi has a powerful ally. But with Dr. Ayana Koji kidnapped, their confidence and happiness may be short-lived. Stay tuned for the next episode, Love Shack. Let's turn on the lights, sit back and watch the show. Just the two of us, okay? <gasps> Let's have Master watch it with us! <sighs> Are you certain the report is accurate? Yes. Saki's angel heart was of a standard dimension. 
So we were correct to assume two Angel Hearts were taken. Then we must also assume that the Kurumi Angel has been reloaded with a Mark II heart. That is the mechanical analysis, but isn't there a mystical component to activating the Angels? Spells and prayers, I fail to see your point. We must retrieve the Kurumi prototype. Use any means necessary. We should have gift wrapped it for him. We wouldn't have had enough paper. All the material we recovered from the mansion, the two spherical objects believed to be the angel hearts and the blueprint for the new steel angel, all have been taken. Does intelligence have any idea who Brando is working for, General? There's no trace of him. He may as well be a phantom. What? Intelligence departments, both friendly and unfriendly, could not confirm the existence of any spy fitting Brando's profile. I trust our sources, Amaki. I tell you truly, he does not exist. Meaning? Meaning there's a secret player in this dangerous little game no government was aware of. Then we must act immediately. You'll do no such thing. General, don't you understand the security of our nation is at stake? That's it, isn't it? Yes, this is part of some political agenda. I am not so easily manipulated, not by scientists such as yourself or egocentric heads of state. Few know about the Steel Angel Project, and I intend to keep it that way. Just because we don't know who our new enemy is is not a reason to ignore their presence. Without proof, this enemy is not a recognized threat. And until I have that proof, my powers are negligible at best. You're scared. How dare you! <sighs> Remember, Doctor. The case could be made that it was you who birthed this shadowy situation in the first place. General. Enough, Imagi. I expect your resignation on my desk within the hour. What? Are you saying I'm fired? You can't do this to me. I'm doing you a favor. Dismissed. Being in the military does not allow for much independent thought anyway. I have done this too long. There was a time when I would have felt what you felt, said the things you say. Now I am a man ruled by legislation and the whims of politicians. You understand you are now free of any such entanglements. It was an honor serving under you, sir. And she was my type, too. All right, Saki, ready? Yep, I'm ready. Here. Got it. 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 Here. We did it! Man, we are good. Really good. Very impressive. I wish I could come up with a way to thank you. No, there's no need to be thanking me. I'm the one who destroyed the place. I should thank you. Huh? For what? For letting me build that. <coughs> what a 
cute little cottage. Oh, good. You like it. Flying is not in my program. Well, I just love it, Saki. Perfect. Because I built it just for you, Kurumi. What? You built it for me? Yeah. I hope you don't mind. A house just for the two of us? How could I not love it? I can see it now. Us together. In love. Happy. Oh, I can't stand it! Oh, gosh. I'm so happy you feel the same way, Kurumi. I can see it now, too. The two of us, in love, happy, so happy. Oh, I can't stand it. Thank you, God. What's with those two? I tell you, little brother, you don't know how lucky you are. Dr. Amagi. I want you to know how sorry I am for what happened, and I know you won't believe this, but you can trust me. Will you tell me, why was Dr. Ayanokoji working with you on the Steel Angel Project? I'm a mystic. What? Mystic? I sensed there was a spiritual life in what Ayanokoji had created. Likewise, he sensed this and he came to me for help. He realized science alone might not be enough. The mere notion of such a component would have made him the object of ridicule, so we worked together in secret. Spirituality and science. You see, even you yourself, Doctor, are skeptical about the concept. And I can accept that. But whether you ascribe to it or not, there are those among us who believe that the true power will not come from science alone. But science and spirit merge together. Do you understand? I don't know, but I'd like to attempt it. Well, looks like our little love nest is coming together. Hey, Kurumi? I've got something to show you. Just a little thing. Do you think we could hang this up, Kurumi? I hope you like it. Sisterly love, isn't it pretty? Uh, yeah. I just don't think that we're going to be able to enjoy it that long, Kurumi. We've got to find Dr. Ayana Koji. Do you understand? I'll go anywhere you want, Master, just as long as I can be with you. Right. Me too. Well, Dr. Amagi's here already, and I bet we'll be leaving in a couple of days or so. I'm ready. So am I. I'm glad you're all so eager. Well, yeah, I think so. We're going to travel to Izumo to Dr. Ayana Koji's lab. There we may find the answers we're looking for. Kurumi's power, Saki's purpose, and where they're keeping Dr. Ayana Koji. And you're going with her, Nakahito. The four of you will leave in the morning. <gasps> What's wrong, Kurumi? <laughs> I didn't think we would leave so soon. I thought Master and I would be able to stay in our sweet little house together. <laughs> poor sweet Kurumi. <laughs> and poor me, too. We must succeed so we can return here as soon as possible. Kichi Joji, Kogani. We're here, sir. Come in. So they are moving. Yes, they prepare to leave in the morning. Destination Azumo. Follow them, but be certain you are undetected. Do not contact the division unless it demands level 10 involvement. Sir! Good luck.
Dr. Hamagi, please, promise me you'll take good care of my little brother. You can expect nothing less from me, Kamehito. Nakahito, I want you to be very, very careful. Okay. I can't thank you enough for your hospitality, Kamehito. Don't worry, Kamehito. I'll take good care of Master. Well, guess this is it. Right. Goodbye, brother. Goodbye! Guard him well, gentle spirits. Though the prophecy is grave, I believe in your power to intervene. Take care of my brother. And you, I place his care. Okay. Who cares if we're not in our own love nest? At least we're together. Hey! Come on, Master. The quicker we do this, the quicker we can get home. When Nakahito falls ill, the group seeks medical attention. Yet there's something very suspicious about this doctor, and Kurumi finds herself in a dangerous operation. Don't miss the next volume of Steel Angel Kurumi, The Trouble with Angels. I play Kurumi, the steel angel, robot, pink hair, 
crazy maid outfit. That's who I play. <laughs> Nakahito has this situation thrust upon him, you know, kind of like, it just kind of all happens by accident. He doesn't mean for any of this crap to happen, but it happens. In a way, that's a little similar to my life. The roles that I've done, I've really enjoyed everything, but um, in particular, this character I wanted to play because there was that different angle. Um, I believe my exact words were, I want to play the lesbian. <laughs> I think I got the role because Stephen Foster thinks I'm a big freak, and he likes to give me characters where we can really have a lot of fun and pull some interesting stuff out. I can't tell you anything about the character that I play. Not at this point, I have to keep it a secret. Uh, Steel Angel Kurumi is one of the most beautiful shows to come uh, through our shop. It's an exciting little story about androids uh, called Steel Angels. They are unique in design, physically drawn as well as uh, emotionally textured. Uh, the lead, Kurumi, is one of the most powerful beings ever created, which kind of causes some problems for the bad guys. We must retrieve the Kurumi prototype. Use any means necessary. The show looks cool. It's, uh, you know, very bright colors, but I love that there are sort of, um, there's a sort of punctuation with a really simplistic sort of Hello Kitty almost, you know, like the Sanrio quality of little um, anime figures coming in for, for punctuation of, of comic bits. And then also, um, as you get into the series, there are things that are um, in, in sort of violent scenes and things like that. Um, the violence is sort of shown by stills that are very uh, sort of Batman kind of comic book quality. You know, it's uh, a lot of cross-hatching and, and action lines and things like that. <laughs> very mature looking, some of them, and then it's nice that you've got like the serious scenes, you've got the sort of serious animation and serious sort of colors and things like that that are uh, the artistic quality it was very nice. And then in the comic part, you've got a little bit more of a simplistic, sweet, happy kind of kind of cartoon. Ah! Get back! In this show, the characters are very three-dimensional in the sense that, yes, you you have the the battles and the war going on, but yet you also go into the other side and develop their um, emotions and they explore everything from love to hate to, you know, sadness, the whole thing. All you need to do is look into his eyes and see that we're madly in love. Oh, uh, let's not go overboard. You don't love me? I think the artwork on on this show is beautiful and I think that's why manga has you know attracted the attention of people in in western cultures because it's it's um it's beautiful to look at and it's surprising because you expect it to be for children but it's not at all so it's an interesting medium to play in it's an interesting genre because you can a bit like Farscape in a way you can be cheeky and irreverent even though on the on the surface it looks quite innocent um, but uh, I was also surprised the script was written in quite a, in such a way that I was able to visualize quite a lot of the storytelling. So when I finally did see some of the images, I was surprised by how close my imagination had taken me to what was you know, eventually put in front of me. When I first uh, found out about the show, uh, I was so intrigued by, uh, by the format. It's, it, you've got elements of mechanical and mysticism. These, angel, these steel angels are not merely you plug them in and they're good to go. There's a mystical quality to them. They have to be jump-started, so to, so to speak, by an element of spirituality. And uh, when you watch it, you realize that the scientists who've created these, these beings are also grooming a young mystic to kind of chant them to life and give them this extra power, which winds up kind of biting them on the ass. Originally, Dr. Ayana Koji believed my powers of mysticism would be able to activate the angel, but it seems you were able to do so without any such incantation. But I didn't do anything. 
You might not have meant to do anything, son. But nevertheless, you did, and now you are the only one who can control Kurumi. One of the strangest things, I think, is artwork is normal, and then sometimes they turn into little bubble people, so that's always cute, you know, the effect that they uh, come off with there, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of strange, you know, when they change from being regular to being bubbles, you know, you, you think, you know what I'm talking about, like the super uh, uh, deformed, super small. Come on, give me an order! But order you to do what? Well, I bet if you think really hard, you'll come up with something, Master. Hey, you're putting a lot of pressure on me. But what about the pressure I'm under? <laughs> okay, okay, calm down. I'll do it. So what'll it be, Master? It's got beautiful animation. It's got the certain style that I think is different from most shows. It makes it unique. At the same time, it's got beautiful characters, and they're hilarious. My God. The Kurumi prototype wasn't Dr. Iona Koji's only angel project. This is the second unit, codename Saki. Perfection. So life. Ah. <clears throat> it was a joke. Huh? Huh? I'll get it. Wait. We don't know who it is, Nakahito. Don't worry, I'll find out. keeps bugging me. Open the door. Saki, come with me. I'll need to examine you. I don't belong to you. You keep your hands off. <gasps> Are you okay, Master? Please let me help you. Tell me if it hurts. Well, this hurts pretty much. Master, you know in your heart that I would do anything for you. Couldn't you just do this one little thing for me? Please, Master? For me? Okay. Pucker up! Here! What? What does she want him to do to her? I believe the correct term is kiss. Uh, mm -hmm. What are you talking about? This isn't a fairy tale. I question this little experiment as well. Come on, Master! Smack her! Kelly Cousins plays the lead in Kurumi, uh, and that's probably the the hardest role you're always trying to cast is, is the lead. And with Kurumi, uh, certain things don't play in Japanese as they do. Uh, certain things don't play in English as they play in Japanese. Kurumi does this. Oh, I can't. I can't get that high. It's some horrible squeak that she does, which is boundlessly charming in Japanese, but it really falls flat in in the English translation. So we were we knew we'd have to do some kind of vocal styling. And Kelly, uh, it's her first lead role in an anime, and she just knocked it out of the park. She does these odd inflections with her voice, where she just it goes from sultry coo to this birdie squeak, and and she captured all the the youthful exuberance that Kurumi has. Vocal challenges for this character, she's a little bit higher than I would normally be. A sister? Woo! I can't believe it! I'm not alone! Kurumi has a sister! Huh? We are going to be the best of friends, Saki! We'll stay up all night and talk on the phone and do each other's makeup and flirt with boys! I can't wait! Oh no you don't! Don't fall asleep on me now! Wake up! She's she's interesting because she's sort of uh, you keep reinventing this sort of innocence for her. Like she's childlike, but she also, you know, she knows something, and she's learning like through the episodes. So it's sort of nice um, that through the vocal vocal work that you do with it, that she's um, she's getting a little bit smarter as each episode progresses. It was really nice of you to save their lives like that, Master. Hey, where are you going? Just leave me alone. What did I do wrong? I like the romantic parts of it. I like the romantic feel that it has. Uh, also, I think from a standpoint of being a guy, the romantic lead is quite young and quite inexperienced, and I think we can all kind of relate to that oh my god, what do I feel here, and what is, you know, this, this, this thing of love? Uh, especially when the 
object of your affection is quite pushy, uh, quite very forthright, and I really like you a lot. Uh, and of course, that you know, she'll do whatever you want. She'll kick somebody's ass, <laughs> or she'll save your life, or you know, she'll pick up a tree and kill somebody just to protect you. Which is kind of what you're looking for in a mate, I think. I think that was what everybody kind of like. I don't know who you are, lady, but you put that. I think Kurumi is a lot more innocent than I am. She's a lot more trusting and a lot more uh, sweet. But I'm very loyal, you know, to friends and things like that, and will follow people to the ends of the earth. But Kurumi, I think, um, is maybe a little bit more willful too. Like she, she's loyal, but then you know, uh, she, people tell her what to do, and she's just like, "Shut up! <laughs> I'm gonna do whatever I want to do." And so, maybe that's not very different for me at all. For the role in Nakahito, we were thinking about we were going to try to cast a boy, uh, but the, you know there's just nightmares with that. The labor you can only work them a couple of hours. Uh, it's a there's some nudity in it, so it would be kind of didn't want to really have that kind of conversation with you know someone's parent about you know hello your young boy is going to be seeing naked breasts. You know I hope that's going to be okay with you. So we wound up. Uh, Making the wise call, I think, and we cast uh, Kira Vincent Davis as uh, as the lead boy, which was kind of fun. We were wondering, should we keep this quiet? You know, should we, you know, not tell people? You know, Kira was like, well, I'll do an alias if you want, but you know, Yardley Smith has done Bart Simpson for years, and Dexter's a girl, and you know, I mean, so it, it's quite common knowledge, and we think we're dealing with a sophisticated market now that they understand that. So. And she was the right boy for the role. <laughs> it makes any sense? She's uh, uh, she's got a great innocence about her. Nothing happened. What is it, Akahito? Do you remember something? Tell me. Yeah, but I. <gasps> tell me. Listen. No matter what happens, you have to tell me about it. It's great playing a boy. Uh, it sounds kind of funky, but it's pretty natural for me. <laughs> I'm a tomboy, so it's not that far-fetched. No way! Oh, come on, pretty please, Master. It'll be easy for you, Master. Just pretend Saki is Kurumi. But I can't do that. I couldn't. Hey, I don't ask for all that much, you know. Kurumi, I'd like to, but I just can't. What do you mean you just can't? But I don't remember how I did it the last time. I enjoy playing a diverse range of characters, a huge range of characters, and this is cool because it's actually my first lead. Um, Master? What is it, sweetheart? <laughs> oh my god! I never thought just one little word could make me so happy. Silly thing. You know how I feel about you, don't you? Yes, I know. Kurumi, can I... can I kiss you? What? You want to kiss me? There's nothing I'd like more, Kurumi. <sighs> me either, Master. It's a sweet story. Uh, the affection that the two characters have for each other is, is quite charming. Uh, it makes for a very warm... I think with any aspect of drama, you've got to have kind of a, a, a bedding of care. And the fact that these two people, uh, one half person, uh, cares about each other so deeply uh, makes for uh, makes the drama all that more emotional, all the, all the more exciting. He's uh, the lead boy character from the series, and uh, he's 11 years old. He's a mystic. He's an onyo mystic. Um, his family, he's a descendant of an Omyo priest. Uh, he uh, accidentally comes upon the steel angel Kurumi and uh, he kisses her and uh, brings her to life. And uh, so now he's her master, he's her boy master. <laughs> what is this thing? Is it a doll? <laughs>
one of the, the neat things about the Steel Angel Kurumi is that there are other angels that come after. Uh, you know, the character will be walking along and then all of a sudden there's another android uh, basically coming to kick her ass and kill her, uh, which is kind of fun. One of these androids that's first sent after Kurumi is Saki, and she's uh, a, an interesting, interesting case to say the least. We were casting it and we didn't know who really we wanted to, to, to play the role. And Monica Rial, who eventually got the part, uh, has been in some of the most iconic uh, shows that we've done. She's been in Nadesco, she was uh, in Gasaraki, she was in Generator Gall, and in Generator Gall she played a pink-haired girl, and in Gasaraki she played a green-haired girl. And when we were talking about casting decisions, Monica said, I really would like to play the, the normal hair-colored lesbian if I could. And so, <laughs> so Monica got the part of Saki, who is uh, an android who falls for Kurumi. What? You built it for me? Yeah, I hope you don't mind. A house just for the two of us? How could I not love it? I can see it now. Us, together, in love, happy. Oh, I can't stand it! Oh gosh, I'm so happy you feel the same way, Kurumi. I can see it now, too. The two of us, in love, happy. So happy. Oh, I can't stand it. Thank you, God. What's with those two? My character in Steel Angel Kurumi is Saki, who is the second Steel Angel after Kurumi. Um, actually, Kurumi originally believes that Saki is her younger sister, and Saki would like to believe otherwise. <laughs> well, looks like our little love nest is coming together. Hey, Kurumi, I've got something to show you. Just a little thing. Do you think we could hang this up, Kurumi? I hope you like it. Sisterly love, isn't it pretty? Uh, yeah, Taki is different in the sense that she is soft-spoken, but at the same time, she stands up for herself. Um, She's kind of a Miharu from Gasaraki in, in that sense. I think Miharu is probably the most similar character that I've played in the past to her. Um, at the same time, Saki has this unrequited love that I've never gotten to play in any other character. So, uh, not to this extent anyway. So that makes it a lot more exciting. And she's got an edge to her and you never know exactly what's going on and what's gonna happen. When you're dead. There are certain characters that are redeemed, that y when you meet them, it is an assassin, a, a metallic beauty whose main goal is to kill the lead. And to see that arc from stereotypical Terminator-esque monster to transform into something else, something softer, something more multifaceted, multidimensional, I thought was very charming. It, it not only accelerates the action, but it it makes it a richer production. I think it makes it a richer viewing experience for people who know anime and people who don't. I think if you don't know the genre, you could pick this thing up and uh, and be like fast forwarding through the credits to the next episode. Well, at least that's, that's what we did. It's a beautiful show. I mean, first of all, the animation in itself is gorgeous. So just to look at it while we were recording, I was watching, and, and it, it's beautiful. Um, the characters are fabulous. You've got three totally different characters. I don't know much about Karinka yet, but I know that Kurumi and Saki are both very different. Um, you've got all of you know Nakahito and the, the brother and everybody all together. They're just such powerful characters that when you mix them together, it makes for a really good plot line. You've got Kurumi, uh, Saki. And they're all, there's these other angels that I just can't talk about. The only thing I can tell you about my character is that she's a bit of a psycho-disturbed person. Um, 
she starts off as this really bad chick and she's out to get everybody and then she kind of warms up to the others by the end. I don't want to give too much away though. Hilary Haig is one of the most popular actresses uh, in an working in anime today. Uh, she's been in Bubblegum Crisis. Wow, whoever took this is a great photographer. <laughs> oh, awesome. I really am getting good. Hey, wait a second. This tape is a little too good to be the work of an amateur. Whoever it was who took it must have been waiting for us. Uh, she plays an androgynous troll and orphan. Oh, Vulcan, hold on. I told him he shouldn't have eaten those mushrooms. What kind of mushrooms? Uh, they look something like this. She's in the lead in Princess Nine. I'm just a girl who works in a restaurant. Here. Take my hand. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? Hold on. <laughs> hey, watch your hands. I love to do anime. I had never really watched anime until I started doing the voices about three years ago. And it is just a blast to work with the people I get to work with and do the characters I get to do because obviously in your real life you'll never get to play a dog or... Well, hopefully not. <laughs> Maybe it's typecasting, I don't know. But, you know, a psycho steel angel. So it's a lot of fun. She's got a role in Karumi, but it's pretty much like Claudia Black's role. I can't tell you who she plays just yet. But, uh, but keep watching, keep watching. You'll find out soon enough. I think I got the role because Stephen Foster thinks I'm a big freak. And he likes to give me characters where we can really have a lot of fun and pull some interesting stuff out. The cast is fantastic, and we're actually very lucky to have uh, Claudia Black play a character, which I don't, I, I don't think I, I can't tell you what character she plays. <laughs> she plays yet. Uh, she makes an appearance later in the show, uh, but it is one that fans of anime are going to enjoy, and fans of sci-fi are really going to get off on. Very cool character. Um, had to be enough to entice me to come all the way to Texas, Houston. Not that I needed an added incentive, but um, I don't think it would have been worth Stephen's while to, to bring me down here for a couple of lines. So um, it was a great part to play, and, um, and I think that's all I can tell you at this stage. I was very lucky to get her. Uh, I met Claudia. I met Claudia when we were in Los Angeles doing a DVD commentary for Farscape. And uh, we kind of got on real well. And uh, kind of in passing, talked about what I did about uh, doing Japanese cartoons, um, anime. And she kind of expressed an interest. So for about a year and a half, I was looking for what role could I possibly find for her. And then when Kurumi came across my desk, I found the role and called her up uh, in Australia. We talked about it for a little bit. And then we met in New York to do another round of commentaries. and. Uh, the rest is anime history and sci-fi history. So she's been in Houston for a couple days uh, doing her part and uh, she's kicked ass and taken names. It's a, it's a good juicy role and uh, we're really fortunate to have her. Stephen directs the commentaries for um, the Farscape DVDs. So when he was in LA, I think it must have been 1999, maybe 2000, we were doing the season one commentaries and Stephen gave me his card and it said something about anime, animation work. And I said, do you do this regularly? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, if you ever get a part that you think would be good for me, let me know, because I'd love to do it. And he was so surprised. He was like, really? You really want to do it? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So let me know. So 2001, I get an email several years down the track to tell me that they've found just the right part for me, so it was very cool. It's like being in a 1950s quiz show. <laughs> like, you're there with the, um, you know, all by yourself. Um, there's a glass panel and then behind the panel there is the TV screen and, uh, and it's all synced up to computers and so you just watch the cartoon or the little snippet of the cartoon that you're working on at that point in time and uh, you do 
the line over and over until it ceases to have any meaning. <laughs> and uh, you have your, your headphones, which is your communication to the director and the sound operator. And um, it's just basically you, a music stand with your script on it and the TV screen. And it's kind of therapeutic, it's nice. I did a little bit of work um, on a Farscape episode which involved some animation, a more traditional style of animation. And uh, that's what I'm more accustomed to, is doing the, the voice work first and then having them animate around you. Um, however, we did have some restrictions and some very specific guidelines because we were dealing with um, you know, Ben Browder, who's the star of Farscape, being, you know, real in the scene and my character appearing as an animation around him. So that was technically quite difficult to do. Um, and this job has certainly presented some technical difficulties as well. Yeah, the easiest thing for, um, for me doing anime voiceover is that you've got the picture there in front of you, like Disney and stuff like that. You don't have the picture at the very beginning. You do the voiceover first and then they draw the pictures to match what it is that you're doing. And for me, it's great as, as sort of, you know, an outline of where it is that I need to go, you know, how the character is feeling in this moment and stuff like that. Sometimes you don't get very many cues, but Kurumi is great because the animation is so cool and, uh, and they really seem to have a lot of fun drawing her. That uh, she's got all of these facial expressions and you'll look at a single line and there are so many different things that she goes through just physically that um, for me it's a lot of fun to see if I can try and match that vocally. And then it's also neat, uh, you know, being a stage actor, you get to see the whole package, you know. Like if you're a film actor, it's mostly just this area and stuff like that and you sort of have to focus on that. As a stage actor, you get to use your whole body and where you are in space and how you're relating to other people on stage and your voice and all of that. And it's really nice with anime to just focus on one thing and try to bring all of this through the voice. And it's sometimes really maddening because <laughs> you're like, if I were on stage, all I would have to do was, uh, you know, look over in some direction and, and this would be perfectly clear what emotion it was that I was feeling. But now uh, you have to do it all through your voice. And so it makes you become very inventive. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult because you don't have somebody else's lines to feed off of sometimes, especially if I'm the first one recording and everything's in Japanese and I don't speak Japanese. So, um, it, it's, it's different. I'm in a booth, I'm isolated, I'm not working with other actors. Being in the booth is a different experience because you're sitting back there with these headphones on and there are you know, usually two or three people and they're laughing at you hysterically but you don't know what they're laughing about. You don't know if you completely flubbed or if that's something you did was good or, or what's going on in there. I was surprised, I suppose I didn't really think it through, but I was surprised that all the animation had already been done because it's obviously made for the Japanese market first and so there was, you know, uh, it's in Japanese and, and obviously over here for distribution to English-speaking countries, uh, you get actors in to, to revoice in English. Uh, so I was surprised <laughs> by the word that uh, you guys used to describe the mouth moving, which is, you know, just follow the flaps. Um, and I didn't know what they were talking about until I started taping today, uh, recording today. But it's, um, it's a difficult and different process. On Farscape we, we do ADR, which is additional dialogue recording. It's quite a high percentage that we revoice of our dialogue. Um, and this is obviously all revoicing. But um, to someone, you know, hearing someone else's voice who's already done the performance before you, um, doing an American accent, um, and the particular character I'm playing, it's quite, um, I have to be quite dexterous, so it's, uh, it's been a good challenge. Gosh, it's such a great job. <laughs> What's the hardest part of the job? Uh, it's really hard to answer. I guess scheduling is the hardest part of the job for me, you know, trying to, uh, trying to find time to come in because it doesn't really take that much time. Um, and I think, I think that when I finally do come in and, and do the job, the hardest part for me, the part that I always dread most is doing Foley. You know, I, I don't know why, I always dread it. Every time I get hit, you know, there's a, oh, or something that you've got to make, and it's just a nightmare, because you're always like, 
you say the same syllable over and over and over again, and you never know whether it's right, and then you got to do it again, and it's the whole fight scene. It's crazy. I love working in anime. It is so much fun. I kind of fell into it as a fluke about three years ago, and the only anime I'd ever seen were like Speed Racer and Voltron and that kind of thing when I was really young. And it's just so much fun working with the people that I get to work with, mainly. Very proud. Very proud indeed and very excited because Farscape's just started on air in Japan because we thought that as a show it would appeal, especially, you know, aesthetically to the Japanese audience because of their love of anime and of manga. So uh, to cross over and now do something which is quintessentially Japanese um, and an opportunity to work with, um, with Stephen again, of course. So it's, um, it's been great. I'm yeah, very happy.
は次回は何するですかくるみワクワクです知らないよそんなのキスの次なんてはあくるみワクワクですえ本当キスの次はスルメそうかメメメダカこらこらちゃんと予告やらんかしょうがないな鋼鉄天使くるみ第2話ご主人様は一人ですお楽しみに誰か来る新聞屋さんですか違う牛乳屋さんですか違うああお豆腐屋さんですか違うそんなんじゃなくもっと恐ろしいえー、でもとっても色白で美人な誰かだに兄様鋼鉄天使くるみ第3話新たなる天使サキ絶対見てねです来週のサブタイトルはねえもう時間ないよ喋っていいから鋼鉄天使くるみ第4話嫌いにならないでです絶対見てねですあ,あびっくりした<音楽>やったなくるみ妹ができるんだぞ本当ですかわいですお前もくるみ姉さんなんて呼ばれるようになるんだしっかりするんだぞくるみがくるみ姉さんですかじゃあくるみもさきちゃんのことさき妹ちゃんって呼ぶですおいそれ変だどうしてですか姉さんはつけて妹はつけないのうーんそう言われてみるとそれは高熱天使くるみ第5話妹ができたです絶対見てねですやったなくるみ妹ができるんだぞ本当ですかわいです次回からいよいよ新展開えー、何私と姉さん二人きりの愛の生活が始まるんです二人で横丁のフレーさんに行ったりああうっとりさっきあなた性格変わったわねいえこれが本当の私愛の鋼鉄天使さっきなんですあそう鋼鉄天使くるみ第六話愛姉妹この胸の高鳴り、聞こえますか、姉さん。ご主人様、そこはダメです。僕、何もしてないよ。ええ、あ、じゃあ、天城博士ですか。何言ってるの、私のわけないじゃない。だったら、さきちゃん。はい。って言いたいけれど、違うの、姉さん。じゃあ一体誰ですかくるみの変なとこ触ったの変なとこってどこ子供はいいの考えなくて鋼鉄天使くるみ第7話そこはダメです絶対見てねです
In every heart, there is a dream. So Hayakawa, do you have a dream? For every dream, there is a chance. It's the girl, isn't it? I can't believe your pitch broke my bat. Who in the heck are you? I never told you, but your father was an ace pitcher in high school. In fact, he won the national tournament. My dad won at Koshien? And for every chance, there is hope. You saw her. It was almost as if her father had been reborn on the mound. Koshien. She wants me to follow in my father's footsteps. Within three years. Is that even possible? But only if you're willing to take the risk. The National High School Tournament is for boys only, Keiko. They're not gonna change the rules so easily. If it was going to be easy, I wouldn't be interested. What is this nonsense that I've been hearing? You're recruiting baseball players? 
It's time the sexual barriers were shattered, and we're going to start with Koshien. You gave that girl a scholarship? Japan is changing, and we will lead that change. Our girls will lead it as equals. They will play against the boys' teams on equal footing, and within three years, they will win the championship. I don't push myself too hard. Yes, you do. I won't give up, even if it means going against my mother! Can't you see? A girl of that sort is going to cause trouble for us. With, you know, with boys or something. As two teenage star athletes attending sister high schools, there have been some rumors about the two of you that you might be dating. You like her, don't you? Well, when you put it like that, I guess I do. Some dreams are worth fighting for. Yes, they are. But think of the girl. Right now, she's like a bud ready to blossom. She's just a child. Is she ready for the weight you're about to put on her shoulders? Is she strong enough to carry your dream? Think of her future. Nine girls, nine dreams, and the baseball series that will change them forever. Do it now. 